That's it. That's it. That's flipping it. You got to be messing with us, right? We have been teased for six episodes. It was built up that what Master Soul and his Jedi buddies covered up 16 years ago was vile and heinous. We were promised that once all was revealed, we would understand how witches who used the dark side of the Force were innocent victims of a Jedi atrocity. Lesbian witch coven, good. Jedi's evil. The writers promised to present a very clear-cut example that would further their argument that good and evil is just subjective, all based upon your perspective. <laughs> Leslie Headland and the other writers of The Acolyte wouldn't know morality, wouldn't know what makes good, what makes evil, if it bit them on the ass. At the end of the day, the writers proved that the witches were evil and the Jedi did nothing wrong. Although we have to admit, every single character in the show is dumber than a box of rocks. I can attack so I cast. A quick comment about the visual aesthetics of this show. They suck. Seriously, though. If you want an in-depth analysis on the visual aesthetics of the Acolyte, check out my previous videos on earlier episodes. Half the shots are composed like they're trying to make an indie album cover from the 90s. Contrived, to say the least. The Acolyte should go down in history as a cautionary tale of what will happen when you allow ideology and agenda to drive your storytelling at the expense of everything else. People keep saying the Acolyte doesn't make sense. No, there is a logic, granted a twisted and warped logic, but there is a logic to what's going on here. A logic that requires very consistent decision-making in your storytelling. It results in this bizarre, twisted parody of morality we see on display in this episode. Leslie Headland and Disney wanted to deconstruct Star Wars, tell a story about how the Jedi are evil and the Sith are misunderstood and oppressed. The inspiration for the Acolyte story is based upon the witch trials of Northern Europe during the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance. Interpretations of these historic events come straight from the arguments made by academic feminists in the 60s and 70s. Arguments that have been completely debunked, by the way. The feminist argued that witchcraft represented feminine power. Christianity and the church represented masculine power. The conflict that broke out between the witches and the church had nothing to do with good and evil. Those are subjective, don't you know? It's all about power and who's going to be allowed to wield it. The church used concepts of good and evil to justify wielding their power to ruthlessly destroy witchcraft, masculine oppressor, feminine oppressed, exploited, marginalized, masculine evil, Feminine good. The problem with this whole subjective argument? Your ideas of good and evil are subjective. My ideas of good and evil are correct. It's not a subjective argument. It's a superior argument. The logic used to create this show is very literal. So we have a one-to-one -one copy and paste. Dark side of the force, dark side users, the Sith, the witches are feminine, good, Light side of the force, light side users, Jedi, masculine, evil. Our story is going to have a team of Jedi who represent the masculine and evil come into conflict with a coven of witches who represent the feminine and good. The Jedi team, it goes without saying, has to be diverse. There has to be a woman on the team and she has to be the leader. But we have our first built-in problem. A woman is the embodiment of feminine power. By definition, she can't be evil. The woman can't be the cause of the conflict between the Jedi and the witches. She has to be the voice of reason, constantly warning against conflict. And once conflict breaks out, she has to be the one that from the Jedi side helps resolve the conflict. Master Trinity has to show in every conceivable way physically, mentally, emotionally, morally, that she is superior to everyone else on the team. This is particularly important with this team because the other three members are all men. Men, by definition, are evil. 
So they have to be the source of the conflict with the witches. But here we have another problem. Master Soul and the Wiki are minorities. They can't be seen doing anything overtly evil. The white guy does it, right? Well, we have another problem. Torben is the Padawan of Master Trinity. Torben can't go running around chopping up witches right and left all willy-nilly because I'm evil. That would reflect badly on Master Trinity. A strong, powerful woman is supposed to act as a restraining force against men's innate evil natures. How can Master Trinity be that restraining force, show her moral superiority, if she can't even control the man she has direct power over? How can she allow someone she's teaching to become evil? So no, the white guy can't do anything overtly evil to start the conflict as well. Do you all see the Gordian knot the writers are working themselves into? They want to tell a story about how the Jedi are evil. Because the writers insist on following rules that dictate the makeup of the team, dictate how each team member can be portrayed, they can't show the Jedi doing anything overtly evil. These rules mean that the reason behind why the Jedi and the witches fight is going to become so vague, watered down, convoluted, contrived even, to make it meaningless. The Jedi and the witches fight because the plot requires them to fight. No more, no less. The Jedi aren't evil because of what they do. They're evil because the writers say they're evil. The Jedi are evil because of who they are and what they are. Now that's not an argument I'd be making. Hey writers, you might want to look into that argument before you make it. It has a bit of a bad history. The joke? The writers got so wrapped up in their knot, they ended up proving the Jedi to be good. But then again, these writers wouldn't know good if it bit them on the ass. Things don't get much better for the coven either. The rules dictate that they have to be diverse as well. And being the clear-cut good guys, their leader has to be a strong, independent woman of color. Interracial lesbian couple? We're really checking the boxes now. White woman being submissive to a woman of color? Now we're cooking with gas. When the Jedi arrive, they have to be the aggressors. They have to be the ones that initiate the conflict. They're the baddies after all. But the rules create another problem. Strong, powerful, independent woman of color, as the leader of the witches, is the personification of feminine power. She's supposed to be acting as a restraining force on the innate evil of masculine power. She has to show her moral and physical superiority over the Jedi. She has to put them in their place. She can't roll over, acquiesce to the Jedi's commands, be an innocent victim. Strong, powerful, independent woman of color has to show her power, prove that she's one serious badass. If she were to cut loose, she could wipe out the Jedi before they even knew what hit him. You guessed it, we have another problem. Who does she attack and how? Obviously, we can't attack Master Trinity. Her feminine power is acting as a restraint on the Jedi's innate evil masculine power. Can't mess with that. Master Soul and the Wookiee are minorities. Can't go there. So the white guy it is. Yep, we have another problem. Torben is still the Padawan of Master Trinity. You can't do too much to Torben because that will diminish Master Trinity's power. Mother Anastasia needs Torben to lower his guard to allow her into his mind. We got a problem though. Y'all keeping up with me or is your head starting to hurt? Mother Anastasia asks Torben, what do you want? I can give it to you. It's good old-fashioned seduction. This isn't reality. It's mind tricks, and we're talking seduction. So why doesn't Mother Anastasia appear in a provocative outfit? Hey, buddy, all this could be yours. All you got to do is what I want. No, 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 we can't do that. Submitting herself to the male gaze? That would diminish Mother Anastasia's power. Same goes for Trinity or any other woman. Okay, Mother Anastasia appears as a man. Torben's gay. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. We've worked hard enough as it is figuring out who it's acceptable to attack. Making Torben gay? 
moves him up on the oppression scoreboard, changes the equation entirely. It would be impossible to figure out who it's acceptable to attack, and it'd be way too obvious to have a fifth teammate magically appear. So sexual seduction is right off the table. Our problems don't end there. Torben is still the Padawan of Master Trinity. He can't directly betray Master Trinity. He can't do anything overtly evil, corrupt, or even immoral. Otherwise, it will diminish Master Trinity's power. What we're left with? The only way Torben can be seduced is by things that in of themselves are mundane, inoffensive. If you all haven't been picking up on it, that's the key word. Inoffensive. Offend nobody. It's taken quite a bit of work, but we're finally there. Mother Anastasia is now firmly in control of Torben's mind. We got more problems, because what does she do now? Mother Anastasia can't directly kill Torben. That would be a direct attack on Master Trinity, diminishing her power. She can't have Torben jump up, start attacking everybody, because again, that's a direct attack on Master Trinity, diminishing her power. And no one's going to believe a Padawan could do anything to three Jedi Masters anyhow. The only option left? Blackmail. Do what I say, or I will kill him. The power of many problems. Master Trinity cannot acquiesce to Mother Anastasia's demands, because you guessed it, it would diminish her power. The writers have trapped themselves in a corner. That's why we have somebody with no power, Osha, de-escalate the situation. This slavish adherence to the rules is what leads to the inane, stupid scene that culminates in Mother Anastasia's death. The plot demands that one of the evil Jedi murder one of the good witches. But we're back to the same problem. Which Jedi can be allowed to do it? Master Trinity can't do it. That would be woman-on-woman -woman violence, diminishing both of their powers. In fact, Master Trinity can't even be there, have the opportunity to put a stop to it. The writers have to come up with some contrivance to completely remove her from the situation entirely. Master Soul and the Wookiee can't do it. They're minority representation. They can't be shown to be murderers. So we're back to the white guy, Torben. Problem. Torben's too weak. It would diminish the witch's power if he killed one of them. Torben is Master Trinity's Padawan. Diminish her power, blah, 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 blah. Torben has already showed that he could be seduced by the witch's magic. Not believable that he could kill one of them. We come back to Master Soul or the Wookiee. Asian representation is lower on the oppression scorecard than Wookiee representation. This time around, Master Soul gets the short end of the stick. We're still dealing with minority representation. So Master Soul can't be like, Hey, I'm tired of being Mr. Nice Guy. Take that, you dirty witches. Never liked you to begin with. <laughs> I'm evil now. He has to be justified in his actions. At least in that moment, he has to believe he's doing the right thing. This leads to problems with Mother Anastasia's death. She's stronger than all the Jedi combined, so she can't lose in a straight-up fight. Master Soul can't be shown to be devious and underhanded, so he can't shank her in the back while she's not looking. The only way Mother Anastasia could die is because she was distracted trying to protect her children. And why Master Soul killed Mother Anastasia? He misunderstood, thought she was trying to harm the children. I could go on and on and on. Every single narrative choice was driven by ideology and agenda. I want to give you all just one example of how adherence to this evil ideology will take you to a very dark place very quickly. I've already mentioned earlier that the Acolyte doesn't present the Jedi as being evil for what they do. They're evil for who they are and what they are. An evil ideology with an ugly history. Keep that evil ideology and its ugly history in mind as we talk about the Wookiee. The writers have created another problem after Mother Anastasia's death. The Jedi are now more powerful than the witches. But you can't have Torben and Sol shank all the witches. 
which is feminine power diminished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the idea. Removing Trinity from the scene has come back to bite the riders in the ass. They need one of the Jedi to turn, attack the other Jedi. Who's going to get the short end of the stick when it comes to the oppression scorecard this time? It's the Wookiee who gets his mind controlled by the witches. It's the Wookiee who stomps a mud hole in Sol and Torben and then walks it dry. Master Trinity arrives just in the nick of time. She takes down the Wookiee in less than 10 seconds. Seems like I've heard this before. Master Trinity enters the Wookiee's mind, frees it from the witch's influence. The witches die from a backlash from their own black magic. Remember, every narrative decision is being made in adherence to an ideology. Symbolism is everything, in particular representational symbolism. And what they're trying to do is navigate between all of the symbolism. So... Let's look at the symbolism surrounding the Wookiee. How does Leslie Headland and the other writers of the Acolyte present the minority represented by the Wookiee? The Wookiee is very strong, but has low intelligence. He's weak-willed, easy to control and manipulate, irrational, gives in to his passions, bestial. He lashes out at the world. Right, wrong, friend or foe, doesn't matter. And the only one who can clear his mind, allow him to become his true authentic self? White women. Historically, is there a particular minority who has been described with the exact same language, complete with white women saviors? Every design decision is a conscious choice. It's meant to be that way. With the acolyte's slavish adherence to its ideology, I would argue it's impossible to interpret the Wookiee in any other way. You have to understand good and evil before you can start to make convincing arguments about what is good and evil. In their slavish dedication to their ideology, the writers fail to understand that most people find ideas like mistreating children, mind control, blackmail to be vile, repugnant, and evil. And when you dig into the symbolism of this ideology, you realize you're diving headfirst into a cesspool of evil. At any rate, I hope I've given y'all something to think about, and until next time, y'all be safe. If y'all are still here, wow. But seriously, I really appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.